I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. Black people in the world are the original inhabitants of the earth. Studies and findings show that the first humans were birthed in Africa and then from the black humans other races of the world were formed or mutated. For thousands of years, the world had only black people. The birth of white Europeans, Asians, Arabs, and other variants of light-skinned people was around 7,700 years ago. Cheddar Man is a human male fossil found in Goth's cage in Cheddar Goth, Somerset, England. Excavated in 1903, Cheddar Man is Britain's oldest complete human skeleton. The remains are kept by the Natural History Museum in London in the New Human Evolution Gallery. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the face of the oldest complete human skeleton found in Europe. He is clearly a black man. Analysis of his nuclear DNA indicates that he was a typical member of the Western European population at the time, probably with lactose intolerance, light eyes, most likely green, but could be blue or hazel, dark brown or black hair and dark or dark to black skin. However, a subsequent report in New Scientist announced some skepticism from within the scientific community, including the geneticists who worked on the findings. The genetic test identified some of the Cheddar Man's direct descendants among the locals of Cheddar and Somerset. Cheddar Man's remains had been unearthed 115 years ago in Golf's Cave, located in Somerset's Cheddar Gorge. Subsequent examination has shown that the man was short by today's standards, about five feet five inches, and probably died in his early 20s. Professor Chris Stringer, the museum's research leader in human origins, said, I've been studying the skeleton of Cheddar Man for about 40 years. So to come face to face with what this guy could have looked like, and that striking combination of the hair, the face, the eye color, and that dark skin, something a few years ago we couldn't have imagined. And yet that's what the scientific data shows. Genetic studies by the University of Harvard in 2015 went a long way in proving that white people came from blacks. They came to this scientific conclusion by focusing on ancient Europeans, modern human fossils and remains. When the black humans reached the north of Europe, they met an icy and cold climate, which was different from their original habitat. During that era in human history, even Switzerland was immersed in ice. The ice age, which is known as Wurm glaciation, had begun around 130,000 years ago and ended about 10,000 years ago. There was less sunny days and colder, making the production of much vitamin D less likely, including the fact that the melanin was still active on the few sunny days. The initial deficiency in vitamin D, which was a result of melanin protection and low sunlight, caused disabilities, fractures, and also premature deaths among the first Africans in Northern Europe, the first people to arrive in Europe. Extensive research shows that white people had a higher vitamin D production than black people when exposed to the same dosage of sunlight. This was why the body of the first Africans in Northern Europe had to get rid of the melanin. 
black people populated the whole of Luxembourg, Hungary, and Spain at around 8,500 years ago. The original Eurasians, who were the first Africans to arrive in Europe 7,800 years ago from Western Asia, spread two genes in Europe. The genes are SLC24A5 and SLC45A2, which are responsible for the skin color of the white man. The initial population of the Scandinavian region started around 7,700 years ago and was colder than in other regions of Europe. The initial white-skinned humans in Scandinavia carried the herc 2 oca 2 gene that is characterized by blue eyes, blonde hair, and white skin. The process is what science calls natural selection, and it led to the complete whitening of Europe around 5,800 years ago. Studies show that the three above-mentioned genes are albinism genes and are found in and originated from Africa. The OCA gene simply stands for oculocutaneous albinism and further shows that nature chose to uphold and spread albinism in Europe as a result of environmental constraints. And this then means that albinism, which is the state of the white man's skin, is originally an African trait. As was stated, the albinism in Europe is strongly related to blonde hair color, as it is in Africa. Also, there are traces of people with red hair in Africa who are not products of race mixing, as is the case with Africans with freckles. So European hair diversity is not originally a European phenomenon, but African. This diversity of hair color is a function of the original genes from Africa, which later showed up in the European white population. This phenomenon can be used to give an account of the green and blue eyes of Europeans. These eye colors are originally African as well and have spread among the white Europeans through the OCA2 gene. We literally come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. Straight hair among blacks and whites are more of a function of the climate than of genes. The heavy sunshine in Africa made the Africans grow spirally shaped hair to protect the head from excessive heat, while the cold temperature of Europe made the European hair to grow down and cover the external respiratory organs from cold and diseases. But the facts remain that there are black people all over the world with straight hair. The Greeks in the description of the black people of ancient Sudan made mention of black people with long and straight hair. Today, they are found in India and also in Africa, among the Fulani people. So it is obvious that the straight hair of Europeans was formed due to weather conditions during the time of their mutation. Here, we have a picture on the left of an ancient black Syrian, which is located in the so-called Middle East. And on the right, we have a picture of the Jirari people who live in Southern India, who is said to have migrated from Africa over 100,000 years ago. Many of us don't know, but the original Asians were also black. The modern day Asians are usually cast as yellow people, yet they are white. They are also a variant of the original African people. The present day Eastern Asians possess the OCA2 gene, which also places them as albinos. But the original Asians were black. The Anu people were Japan's first inhabitants. And as you can see, they all are black. The slanted eyes, which are a characteristic of the Asians today, is a result of their living in the stormy mountains of North Asia, found between Siberia and Mongolia. Due to the high altitude, bright light and cold winds cause them to dim their eyes. These two factors, 
which were dominant in that region, were the reason their eyes turned that way. The Asian facial feature is found predominantly among the Kiorgian people of Africa, who are descendants of the Bantus and the Pygmies of the Great Lakes. The Arabs of today were produced from a mixture of whites and original blacks from Arabia, which are known as Sabians. About 100,000 years ago, Africans began their migration and journey outside the black continent and entered Yemen and what is known as Palestine today. They were the first modern humans to occupy entire Asia, moving from Israel to Japan. While they dominated Asia, other Africans traveled with the ocean currents through the Atlantic Ocean and arrived in what is now known as Brazil around 50,000 to 65,000 years ago. This migration resulted in the population of the Americas. So yes, folks, the first Americans were black. Many years ago, the study of the DNA of the living humans helped establish that we all share a family tree and a primordial migration story. All people outside Africa are descended from ancestors who left that continent more than 60,000 years ago. About 45,000 years ago, those first modern humans ventured into Europe, having made their way through the Middle East. Their own DNA suggests they had dark skin and perhaps light eyes. Today, about 2% of a typical European genome consists of Neanderthal DNA. A typical African has none. So, in summary, that is why we can confidently say, ladies and gentlemen, the first white man was black. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, Thou art rich.